Good evening. What's going on there, guys? It is the Earth Master here on the uh, live stream with an update video on this Tuesday, December 14, 2021 date, about 7 p.m. California time. The latest quake on the Earthquake 3D globe is a 4.7 over here around the Indonesia area, looks like. Uh, let's get a couple specifics on this. Papua New Guinea, way off there on my guesstimate. 4.7 striking pretty deep though, 173 kilometers below surface uh, for this 4.7. There it is on the map there from the USGS. Pretty deep earthquake, but it's definitely within a location of some similar deep earthquakes uh, throughout history. Of course, regional movements. I don't think I need to explain any of this. It's very active in this region for sure. Uh, but over the last 24 hours, uh, it's been relatively quiet there, so now we're getting a few uh, back-building quakes in, in this area. Aftershock activity continues following that 7.3 that struck last night around the Indonesia area. Floor C, 7.3 in the big circle, followed up by a few aftershocks. Uh, looks like 5.8, the largest aftershock so far. Of course, there's always possibility of a, some further larger movement in this region. Uh, outside of this zone, a couple small earthquakes to the south and up to the north around the Philippines with a 5.0 occurring in that region. Some activity kicking up south of Tokyo, south of the phantom earthquake that struck last night, that 8.1. Uh, some movement around the Philippine plate here, this little trench. Pretty shallow movement though, 10 kilometers for those forests kicking off just south of Japan. Uh, the rest of the North American or the uh, Pacific plate here along the trench and the Aleutian, uh, the Kuril Kamchaka trench and the Aleutian trench all quiet for right now. Just a little microquake activity kicking up uh, in this region last night uh, or a little bit prior in the day yesterday. This was pretty active kicking up here, but now things seem to be calming down. Uh, I do want to talk about something that occurred off the coast of Oregon here. We did have a 4.1 this morning, which I covered in the update video earlier in this day. Uh, and then the USGS adding on a 4.4 earthquake uh, later. Uh, not, not a couple hours later, but we're talking just about pretty recently. They just added this 4.4 on. Not for sure why there was such a pause in the uh, time frame when it comes to putting out this earthquake, but uh, we did have a little bit of activity occurring uh, once again around the Blanco Fracture Zone. Uh, but since then, since that 4.4 uh, earlier, uh, we haven't seen anything on the uptick, at least according to the USGS folks. Movement into the Pacific Northwest, uh, somewhat active. Idaho really ramping up a little bit around the Sawtooth Fault area with a swarm of threes and twos kicking up in this average, or in this... Uh, uh, aftershock area of course uh, this area has seen uh, I believe a six pointer 6.2 I can't remember the exact magnitude here uh, a year or so ago so some aftershock sequence uh, activity occurring there in that region not a whole lot going on in the volcanoes area or at least in the uh, Mount Rainier Mount St. Helens a little bit of activity around Mount Hood even then that's just a little bit of a microquake down there in that region Northern California has seen a little bit of increase in activity off the coast or just right on the coast it looks like on the North American side of the plate boundary a 2.2 occurring just west of Ukiah a couple miles from the San Andreas Fault areas to the north though relatively quiet along the Cascadia uh, swarm of activity up and down the uh, Calaveras Fault and the San Andreas Fault here uh, the creeping section showing some uh, microquake earthquake activity uh, over the last 24 hours uh, around the eastern side of the Sierra Nevada. It looks pretty quiet around the Antelope Valley area. Long Valley Super Volcano is seeing a little bit of movement just inside, well, actually just outside the uh, caldera. A couple of small microquakes and a little swarm here outside of the, uh, uh, the airport. And some movement throughout the Candelaria Hills in Nevada once again, right around the Tonopah region there's the activity once again working its way through uh, Utah some microquakes out there as well stretching up towards the Intermountain West region up into Montana 
Uh, nothing really to report in Southern Cal. Looks like they had a little 1.2 and also some movement that was felt, surprisingly, by a few folks over here around the Anaheim, Orange area, 2.3. I'm surprised some of those folks felt it. it was a pretty shallow earthquake at 5.0 uh, 5.0 kilometers. Uh, it was a little bit uh, deeper one here. 6.8. Uh, where's this one at here? Oh, that one's way up here. 11 kilometer deep uh, microquake right up against the uh, Cucamonga Mountains. San Andreas Fault, of course, sits right here in this area. A dark red line. Further south, things pretty quiet. A couple small microquakes on the Brawley seismic zone. And uh, south of the border, they had that 3.9 way earlier. That's about ready to drop off the globe. Things calming down throughout the southern plains and western Texas. Not a whole lot of movement uh, across the board. Even at the New Madrid zone, not a whole lot of movement. Uh, Ash Flat, Arkansas, seen a 2.1. Uh, that one's pretty deep, 10.5 uh, kilometers for that earthquake just outside of the New Madrid zone. Uh, let's see what else we've got. Puerto Rico, pretty quiet, folks. A little bit of movement around the South America region with some deeper earthquake activity. But uh, overall, things just kind of scattered out and about here across this beautiful Earth. A little bit of movement outside of Kilauea Volcano around the... Oh, what do we got? Fern Forest, 2.2, just occurring within the last hour. This is starting to look a little bit more typical for earthquake activity on the southeast flank. Mauna Loa and Mauna Kea showing some microquakes up to the north. But overall, things just kind of uh, stable at the moment, if you can call it that. Looking at the tremor map along the Cascadia shows continued lack of tremor, meaning no subduction, uh, at least uh, along the, uh, well along the entire section of the Cascadia subduction zone. It's been like that for a little while now. Looking at a little quiet spell occurring. Kind of curious to see how long this will last. Looking at prior charts, of course, there's always uh, little areas of uptick and, and quiet zones. And that's kind of what we're in at the moment. We'll see how this plays out. Uh, I had a few folks asking me about 9.0 earthquakes and how many there have been in the world. Well, at least counting our history, recent history, since about 1900, since uh, at least according to the USGS. Well, this is actually 8.5 and above. But as far as 9.0 earthquakes, the last one to occur was, of course, the 2011 9.1 earthquake in the Japan region. I think we all remember that very well. And then prior to that, 2004 Sumatra. That one was a pretty uh, bad one as well. That was a 9.1 in 2004. And the Alaska 1964 Prince William Sound earthquake, that one was pretty uh, significant as well up there in the Pacific North American Plate subduction zone. And the biggest earthquake ever recorded, the 9.5 1960, the Great Chilean earthquake down here in this area of South America. Pretty shallow earthquake, 25 kilometers there into the trench. And we got one more prior to that. 9.0 earthquake up here off the coast of Russia back in 1952. So how many 9.0s does that make? Well, I think we can count them right here. One, two. I believe there's five, right? Three, four, five. That's about it. Five 9.0 earthquakes. But it's been a while since we've had a pretty significant 9.0 since 2011, interval, intervals really don't matter too much on uh, this activity because even back in uh, 1960, 1964, of course, uh, we had uh, two 9-pointers, one, one, one the greatest one, uh, within about uh, four years of each other. So I don't believe intervals really play a part in it too much. Just uh, all depends on the dynamics, right, of everything going on with the plates and buildup. Uh, but 8.5 and above, there's a lot of 8-pointers, uh, so I kind of just went, went with uh, 8.5 and above. Of course, nothing along the Cascadia. It's been since uh, 1700 since we've seen that. At least a full rupture, even longer uh, before we see, or even longer prior to that, since we've seen like a little partial rupture of the southern end. 
So 8.5 and above right there on the map. Uh, what else we got here, folks? Yellowstone, pretty quiet. Not a whole lot of movement at all. Some of this activity showing up there from the Idaho Sawtooth Fault area. Those three kicking up here, uh, showing up pretty visibly on the Yellowstone stations. Other than that, uh, there's no swarming, no microquakes, no magma movements, no volcanic eruption at Yellowstone. Looks pretty calm and clear for the moment. Solar weather activity remains very minimal as well. Let's go ahead and just run it over real quick and do a recap. Looking at uh, at least the geomagnetic, geomagnetic uh, forecast here over the next three days, very minimal. The sea flare threat has jumped up though as we are getting some sunspot activity. We kind of talked about this last night. We've seen uh, some of this activity kicking up here on the far side of the sun. All this activity ramping up. There's a couple sunspots here as well. All this activity turning towards us over the next couple days, and that will all be facing us here. Some of the spots are, some of the spots are looking pretty active, uh, and therefore uh, the dynamics and whatnot are going to be watched pretty closely. Uh, looks like 2907 there, pretty significant sunspot kicking up that could grow into a monster, uh, and of course that's kind of facing us Earth side here in the uh, coming day or so. We'll have to keep an eye on that pretty closely. I guess I was uh, I was kind of talking about how I wanted some sunspot activity. Well, I guess I got my wish. Kicking up pretty dramatically all of a sudden. 70% chance of a sea flare uh, over the next couple days or so. That may be increasing. M flare threat is a 15% chance, 1% uh, chance for an X flare. Uh, there it goes, thanks to a series of sunspots located across the southeast quadrant. Currently AR 2907, which is this big one right here. Look at that, it's pretty close to these other ones. Uh, it's considered the largest flare threat. However, a pair of emergence, uh, emerging sunspots towards the limb should be monitored closely. Pretty crazy, right? Looking pretty, uh, pretty dramatic there. What do we got here for the last no noteworthy events, but I was watching this absorption map here, kind of ramping up right over uh, right over Australia. All right, guys, we're gonna jump off here. Uh, I'm gonna think I'm can't really call it a night yet. It's pretty early. It's only seven o'clock my time, so no way. I don't know. It seems like the older I get, the more I want to go to bed earlier. I don't know just seems a little strange but then again it's kind of nice to go to bed early it just means you're going to wake up much much sooner all right guys we're going to jump off here have a great day uh thanks for everyone checking in and whatnot uh, make sure you subscribe here to the channel if you haven't already i just looking at some views and stats on the channel and uh out of all the views and whatnot here on the channel what, what do we got another 4.7 over here was that there earlier i think it was uh, kicking up just south of Tokyo and Japan area. But uh, I was looking at some of the stats here on the channel and it looks like 57% of the uh, views on this channel are people not subscribed. So, uh, no, no, 57% are, the rest not. Uh, so for those other percentage of folks, it would be cool for you guys to hit that subscribe button and uh, get notified. Make sure you click that bell, of course, uh, so you can get notified when videos get uploaded and uh, of course when we go live so make sure you guys do that another earthquake coming into the chile region that looks like we're just talking about uh, uh, some quiet activity down there not showing up yet on the globe doesn't look too big possibly under the 4.0 threshold but uh, nonetheless showing up on the seismograph there in the chile station have a good night folks we will chat you guys a little bit later peace out